After starting of DC machine, let's discuss speed control of DC motor. First, let's discuss permanent magnet DC motor speed control. Here is the connection diagram. An armature A1 and A2. And we have applied terminal voltage, positive and negative. Here is no need for field current because machine has got permanent magnets as poles. So the symbol can be drawn like this or simply like this. Okay, I prefer this one because IEEE offers this. Here is an uh, uh, armature current in permanent magnet DC machine. It is equal to load current. Here is Kirchhoff's voltage law around the loop. If we apply it, applied terminal voltage will be equal to summation of the voltages around the loop. Armature EMF, as we know, Ka times flux times angular speed. So let's substitute armature EMF here. Vt is equal to current RA plus Ka flux W omega. So our aim is controlling speed. How can you control the speed? So let's calculate speed Vt minus armature current RA all over Ka times flux. Or we can write W we can write omega is equal to Vt over Ka flux minus Ra over Ka flux times armature current. Okay, it looks nice, but uh, as you remember, uh, we generally prefer speed versus torque curve so instead of current let's substitute torque equivalent so torque was equal to Ka times flux times armature current armature current makes torque over flux Ka okay let's substitute this one here back w is equal to vt minus ka flux minus ra ka flux beep, beep. here is one more ka it makes square here and torque here it is ladies and gentlemen uh, if to apply thermal voltage is constant this guy would be constant in fact in the uh, angular speed of the motor will be a function of some external parameters which is thermal voltage and applied load torque would be I, I write torque A, but uh, it is approximately equal to torque load, you know, especially in steady state operation, uh, especially in no friction case, no mechanical load case. Those are the external parameters affecting on angular speed and some perhaps more here. Ka, beep, beep. it is coming from manufacturing, it is constant, 
flux coming from permanent magnets again it is constant let me say that is zeta and that is zeta squared so here is only zeta coming from design internal parameter it is coming from design manufacturing and then there is one more parameter which is array okay ladies and gentlemen speed will be a function of those parameters so by adjusting acting on those parameters perhaps you can manage adjusting speed in permanent magnet DC motor as you see from the above equation given here zeta minus RA over zeta squared times torque let's say simply torque torque means induced torque approximately equal to load torque and here you see an equation angular speed of the shaft and torque it is a terminal characteristic of a motor you see there is a relation I don't know how it is that is terminal law for mechanical port as you see looks like y is equal to minus mx plus a as a first order line equation looks like this here is a Houston and here is minus m as a slope of the curve and then x is the torque y is the angular speed a is the beep beep no load speed if there is no torque I mean torque is zero if this is this guy is zero that is the no loss speed so w it can be written as w naught which is no load angular speed minus array over zeta squared times torque that is the speed relation Ladies and gentlemen, how can we act on this equation to manage proper speed adjustment? Here is the circuit diagram. Perhaps we can apply here an adjustable voltage source. Beep, beep. Yes, it could be. It could be. Perhaps uh, we can change array. Beep. You cannot manage this array is fixed after manufacturing but perhaps you can add some extra resistance next to array here would be rx to manage proper adjustment I mean an external resource rheostat will be added here to manage adjustability to control that is constant no control that is torque or load torque you cannot change load torque load demands some power or energy you supply that so you cannot act in a real machine for example assume that he this motor is driving an elevator there will be one person in the elevator or two you cannot decide it depends the conditions load will be different so if load is different induced load inside the machine must be different so we cannot act these element directly those are the parameters we can adjust ladies and gentlemen in permanent magnet DC motor let me take this out here is Rx I, I copy this equation here down speed is equal to terminal voltage over zeta minus blah blah zeta squared 
array plus rx array plus rx times t. Now those are the master parameters coming from mechanical port because here's a motor supplying some mechanical output mechanical output power in terms of torque and speed those are the terminal parameters of mechanical port here you can adjust uh, terminal voltage to manage speed and possibly as a second method you can add some additional rheostat in armature circuitry here somewhere here by adjusting these rheostat you can manage controlling speed as a result it looks like y is equal to minus mx plus a and the figure will look like torque versus speed something like that let's say vt1 if you change vt to its half value for example vt2 is equal to vt1 over 2 half of the initial voltage and uh, that is similar changing terminal voltage is used under rated speeds is used for speed control under rated or nominal speeds here you see for example let's say somewhere here w nominal rated so let's say that is torque nominal you are here you operate here and then you want to control speed down to it is half value tata -ta. you should choose a proper voltage under this load to control speed down to its half value you can adjust speed in the speed range between rated speed and zero by controlling terminal voltage rated voltage and zero so you apply some voltage here you can adjust from zero to its rated value houston you had assume that you have a motor having 110 volts armature voltage on the label and then you want to supply 330 volts houston it is dangerous motor will saturate and then will be overloaded do not do that over voltages are inhibited so what is the next method next method would be only controlling rx that was the first one controlling terminal voltage the second one speed is equal to vt over zeta minus ra plus rx over zeta squared times torque and uh, our objective is controlling speed by changing external rheostat added in armature circuitry so what will happen houston that is a slope of the curve it is similar to y is equal to minus mx plus a here's you see slope so uh, here in the second case vt is kept constant you only act on rx adjust rx so that means you adjust only slope what will happen that was the initial speed w naught so here is the result torque versus speed 
it starts from omega naught and then that is the relation there is no additional resistance if you add some rheostat elements here slope will increase slope will increase down to here let's say rx1 if you add more resistances in armature circuitry slope will be like this and here in here in the graphics here, that is the resistance order okay when you add some elements in the uh, rheostat speed go down to zero okay but it is lossy we generally not prefer due to power losses across these rx element because you make some mechanical output here and you draw some armature current so here are some armature current squared times rx power losses copper losses or joule losses on extra element lossy element you dissipate some power it is not preferred okay that is the speed adjustment approaches for in general and especially for permanent magnet dc motor okay how can you manage if it is shunt motor speed control of dc shunt connected or shunt motor first of all as always draw connection diagram connect field circuit parallel which is shunt apply terminal voltage vt here plus and minus here's fields current here's armature current here's load current here's the mechanical output in terms of torque and angular speed of course we all i always mention about angular speed but you know angular speed is equal to 2 pi n over 60 that is in terms of radians per second but we sometimes prefer rpm speed revolution per minute so rpm speed can easily be calculated by multiplying 60 over 2 pi with angular speed that is in terms of rpm revolution per minute okay again here angle uh, rpm speed also can be uh, calculated or uh, mentioned let's write the required equations to speed control here is a kirchhoff's voltage law around the main loop armature loop applied terminal voltage will be equal to armature current times array which is inside the armature plus emf armature emf inside the armature uh, assume that we have drawn the equivalent circuit of armature substitute the emf equivalent which is ka flux and angular speed and again here's flux first of all let's check speed let's calculate speed speed is equal to vt minus current times array over ka phi and ka phi it looks like again uh, here is torque dependent parameter torque is equal to ka times flux times current current is equal to torque over ka flux that current will be substituted here let's do it angular speed is equal to 
Vt minus Ka over flux minus Ra over Ka flux times Houston replace this guy substitute the equivalent which is Ta or simply let's say torque over Ka here would be squared times torque W as a function of torque. Here's a slope. Let's say slope of the curve minus. And here's the initial speed, which is omega naught. That is the speed relation, as you see. But here is something interesting. In the previous uh, discussion, there were permanent magnets and field is coming from permanent magnets and it was constant but here in the shunt machine magnetic field is produced by field current magnetic field is a function of field current so let's discuss what I mean here's the flux here's the flux coming from field Let's say machine is linear and without saturation, without saturation. For simplification, let's say flux is equal to K flux times field current. Here's a linear relation between flux and field current. The slope is Kf, as you see. And if I substitute the equivalent here, let's do it. Let me make it smaller. Omega is equal to Vt minus Ka times K1, beep, beep, Kf times If minus Ra over Ka times flux bip bip kf times if all in parentheses squared times torque houston everything is getting complicated no i want to emphasize the important parameter which is if here flux equivalent remember in startup process i said that to start the motor up to gain uh, speed there must be some field current otherwise torque must not be produced and it must not be larger than low torque and the acceleration will not be positive there will be no speed gain so take care here here if there is no field danger take care if there is no field current beep beep Houston this term goes to infinity that term goes to infinity speed goes to infinity theoretically theoretically it is uh, very dramatic uh, if, if this uh, wire for example uh, cut here somewhere here in such a case if that guy is cut here so the speed will tend to infinity theoretically in reality the speed let me talk about rpm speed uh, rpm speed will go up to for example 30k rpm very high speeds and machine will be damaged that is called as pull out motor pull outs gets very high speeds in fact there is a related movie in DC machine playlist I hope I will find 
Yes, in this uh, movie, in fact, it is a serial motor, but I just talk about an idealization. Here is no mechanical output. Assume that efficiency is 100%, so there must not be electrical input. In such a case, here is voltage, so there must not be any current drawn, because there is no output. Input current is very small, approximately zero, let's say. In such a case, that is a serial motor, field current will be zero. If field current is zero, Houston, if field current is zero, machine go pull out. Machine reaches very high speeds and machine will be damaged at the end of the process. Due to uh, copyrights, I play the movie interrupted. Yes, we have started. It is gaining speed. While it is gaining speed, back EMF EA will increase. When there is an increase in back EMF around Kirchhoff's voltage law, armature current will decrease. Since it is a serial motor, field current also decreases. If field current decreases, produced magnetic field decreases and speeds pull out. Let's see. Further. Due to copyrights, uh, I uh, play it interrupted. It is still gaining speed. At the end of the process, uh, as you see, there is a mechanical and electrical failure, damage occurred in commutator brush mechanism or some bearings. There's a problem always ended by a failure. Such a pull out problems always tend to a failure. That is dangerous. So in startup process, we first remember we said zeroed condition. We first check if there is field current. If there is no field current, there is no need to start up. It is impossible to produce mechanical output. So how can we manage adjusting speed? Again, ladies and gentlemen, here is one terminal voltage. Here would be another if you add some extra elements here. Here in the circuitry. If you add some rheostat here, additional element, here would be Rx and result will be like this. You can adjust this guy. That is constant, that is constant. What is IF, Houston? In shunt motor, in shunt motor, IF is equal to VT over our, our shunt, our field shunt. Let me show it here. Here is a winding resistance called our field shunt. So terminal voltage over RF shunt makes IF or IF shunt. Since terminal voltage is constant, IF can be assumed as constant. In fact, uh, due to heating problems, that guy will increase, so IF will decrease. At the end of the process, a machine gets a little bit higher speed due to heating. Yes, that's true. If a machine or motor heats up, it gets some speed. Especially, I mean, shunt machine. Yes, here would be RX. That is constant. Okay, there is nothing to do. Again, there are two possible methods. Let's do it. That is torque, that is angular speed. It starts from an initial value. Let's say 
W naught, which is no load speed, that this guy, W naught. And then here's a slope, that is the slope of the curve. Let's say there is no Rx yet. If you change slope again, here would be another curve. Let's say uh, there's an increase in resistance, added resistance, larger than Rx1 and larger than zero. So the figure go down to here. Slope will change. If you operate machine at a constant load, for example, constant torque load, speed will be W2, W1, the, let's say W initial. Here would be three possible speed. So you have managed adjusting speed by changing external rheostat. You can also adjust uh, terminal voltage. It directly affects no load speed. Here in this figure VT is kept constant. Kept constant. In the second graphic you have a change in field current as well. It, it is a bit difficult to copy all those equations down to here, but uh, let me try W V T over something I F minus R A plus R X over blah blah I F squared times torque. It looks like this yes yes it is now ladies and gentlemen in the second method in the first method you have adjusted rx and you kept terminal voltage constant in the second method let's let's adjust terminal voltage and keep rx constant so this guy, especially numerator, is constant. But Houston, let me replace IF by VT over R shunt field. Here is VT over R shunt field. W is equal to VT blah blah. Vt over R shunt. This guy is constant. Minus blah blah over blah blah Vt squared R shunt squared times torque. Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on here? Are shunt? What about are shunt? It is constant? Yes, it is constant. If it can be changed, we would manage changing speed if it was possible. But it is not possible. Are you sure? Not. If you add some field controller rheostat here, you can add some value here so field current can be controlled here would be some field control rheostat which is adjustable and you can manage adjusting field current let's do it rf controller here and rf controller here in the second case, we have only changed terminal voltage, so our field controller is still constant, and let's say it is zero right now. There is no additional element. What will be the result? Result would be like this. Torque, angular speed, if you change terminal voltage, 
terminal voltage over terminal voltage it will delete so speed w naught is constant but the slope is decreasing due to this guy yes the uh, slope will be changed let's say vt1 vt2 vt3 and uh, vt1 is the smallest one vt2 vt1 houston here you see the order if you decrease thermal voltage slope will increase slope will increase dramatically so a uh, figure goes down so assume that uh, machine drives a constant torque load here would be possible three possible let's say three different uh, operating points that means you can adjust the speed control ladies and gentlemen yes you have managed it that was the second approach let's talk about the third approach which, uh, which we have just found here RFC RFC is the adjustable one terminal voltage is constant our extra rheostat in armature circuitry is zero and constant again here it was zero let's say external no change or zero okay what will happen if we only adjust feed controller where is feed controller ah ah here it is if you increase field controller no loss speed will increase but slope also increases dramatically because here is square what will happen i mean that stock that is angular speed rfc is zero there is no additional here is omega naught and there is a natural slope and then when you increase resistance here rfc no loss speed will increase and then as you see slope will increase tata there will be new characteristic that is rfc1 rf c2 and rf c2 is larger than rf c1 and it is larger than zero the function will change but machine gets higher speeds houston so ladies and gentlemen finally let's conclude in shunt motor speed control process we use voltage adjustment under rated speeds we adjust voltage from zero to rated value and we adjust speed between zero to n nominal or omega nominal in this range you can make adjustment by changing terminal voltage it is inhibited to write machine by over voltages because machine go under saturation and isolation limits will be broken so you cannot drive machine by over voltages we can control speed under rated speed again here you can not subtract some resistance you can add uh, excuse me excuse me this is constant it was adjustable so again you are right if you add real stats you can only decrease voltages so uh, here is uh, 
let me clean here for zero speed our x must be infinity uh, for rated speed rx must be zero it is uh, inversely proportional if there is zero you have a higher speed if you have infinity uh, the slope will be like this it suddenly drops down to zero if uh, rx is infinity or open loop okay uh, you can manage this if you adjust terminal voltage, uh, we have already discussed this. It can be managed between these range. The speed would be zero to up to rate speed. So we use this method to control speed under rated speeds. But Houston, we use this method uh, to increase speed. For example, there must be zero Rx. In such a case, speed is normal, omega naught. But if you increase speed uh, Rx up to infinity, speed goes up to infinity. Again, here would be something like this. But there is a, a dramatic drop. Slope of the curve is also dramatically increases or minus decreases, as you see. That approach is used for over nominal, nominal speeds. For example, your machine has 3000 RPM uh, rated speed and you want to make it 5000 RPM. Then add, there is only one solution, adding some elements here or decreasing field current. So this method is generally called as field weakening method. In fact, in this method, by adding some field controller rheostat, you reduce field current, you reduce field. As a result, the speed will increase. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that topic is discussed here. Uh, all possible actions will be discussed here. I have already proven all the points and important thing is applying rules if you want to discuss something first of all you should draw diagram and then equivalent circuit and then apply Kirchhoff's voltage law current law and then substitute the equivalent ones and try to define target values and then inspect what affects the result and what does graphics look like okay during that all those speed adjustment something must not be uh, excluded you should know that if you have a motor mechanical output in terms of torque and speed if machine produces make rated speed all those are rated let's say all those are together i want to make some adjustment as a result of adjustment speed is halved that is the new omega which is half of its rated value ladies and gentlemen take care mechanical output will be half of its nominal value new mechanical output will be halved due to speed adjustment aha uh -huh. yes you cannot yield all the output 
since you have decreased speed. Ah, that's good. What will happen if I make speed twice of its rated value? Then Houston, something gets interesting. New output power looks twice of its rated value. Then, ladies and gentlemen, it is inhibited because you have designed a machine for, for example, 10 HP power, and then you want to have double of it. It is impossible due to heating problems. Due to heating problems, it is impossible. If you increase speed, you should decrease torque, low torque, to keep its rated value without enforcing the limits. That is important. What I mean so far, speed adjustment can be applied till rated speed, for example, till rated speed, your aim would be keeping torque at its rated value. Keep it. Your aim is keeping rated torque till rated speed. In this region, you want to keep uh, torque. That, that region called as constant, constant torque region. And then, torque times angular speed makes power. So here's the power. Power get increase till it's rated power. That is the rated power point. The output is rated, speed is rated, so that is the rated output. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in the uh, previous example, you have decided to make speed double, but power limit will be exceeded, so I said you should keep torque down. Otherwise, power limit of the machine will be exceeded. So, over this region, power max kept constant. So, this region is called as constant power region. Below rated speed, it is constant torque region. Over rated speed, a constant power region. Now, uh, the torque in this region will be reduced in such a form because it looks like y is equal to 1x, torque is equal to 1w, it looks like. So, torque times angular speed is something constant, not 1, something constant. So, to manage this, you remember uh, this figure, it looks like something like that. Yes, uh, y is 1x, that is look like this. So, in this region, torque must be reduced in this form to keep output power constant. That's all about speed control ladies and gentlemen there would be much more discusses about shunt motor serial motor compound motor what will happen it takes just time but the concepts are the same we generally use field weakening for over speeds we use other methods for underrated speed control that's the end of this topic.